Well, Herb, let me just say thank you for being here, man. Oh, man, thanks for having me, Rob. I appreciate yeah. you in that. Uh -huh. Now, before today, you've yeah. seen Herb on TV, right? Just TV. Okay. Just TV, so it's really cool to meet you in person. Oh, nice to meet yeah. you. Yeah. Nice to meet <laughs> okay. you. So I normally hug, though, right? And, and I'm going to give me a hug. Yeah. So well, hug. there you go. <laughs> yeah, we, we got the wide shot. Yeah, we, we can right, show the hug. Right. Yeah. But, okay. But you, when you saw him, you know, yeah. he's the guy that's in the cage. Yeah. Small guys, big guys. And those guys are they're on a mission to hurt each other. Uh, yeah. And but the referee at the end of the day really is the person who keeps the peace. I mean, if you will. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to. Yeah, I, I do that. I try to. I guess the way I look at it is I want to put a, a, a steady environment so these guys can you know feel free and you know they have some sort of uh, you know some structure to what's going on there. Yeah. You, do you yeah. ever like see in a guy's eyes when he's fighting that he really wants to get out of there? Um, <laughs> no, no, okay, okay. Every now and then I've seen it, but very, you know, to be honest, like, you know, a lot of people say, you know, think, okay, you can see this or I can see this by his posture or yeah. this or that. And you know what? Um, I don't try to do that anymore because you're all, uh, you're often wrong, you know? Hmm. Uh, there's some guys who like have a, you know, who just seem really subdued or that's just the way they are, but inside they're never going to break. You know what I mean? Interesting. And but even though they look like they're broken when they walk in, you know? Right. Um, I have a friend I've been uh, watching him fight forever and he um, this guy man he he just has like a different rhythm to the way he moves so every time he's in a fight he looks like he's just getting beat up and he looks like he's looks like you know what I mean the way he <laughs> yeah. moves he's one of those people who dances to a different drum you know so it looks like he's always flinching but actually he's having the time of his life he's happy as can be you know and um uh, that's yeah, interesting. So. I was got, actually going to ask because I was because you're right there. You actually can mm. see get you can have eye contact with them. Like if you have a like you can pick up a vibe or a look to, to tell which one you think might actually win. You but know? That's what I said. No, I can't. Yeah, I can't, can't pick it. No, I can't pick it by the way they look. You know what I mean? I mean that be that would be interesting though. Is like maybe yeah. the next hundred fights you ref. Mm -hmm. You know, before the fight, just kind of look <laughs> like, at them. And then make a note, like, who you think put in the envelope. You uh -huh. know? <laughs> right, yeah. Back pocket. Uh -huh. and uh -huh. then if, if you're, like, 55% accurate, I mean, that's be pretty right. good. I yeah, know. Yeah. But, see, I'm supposed to have a clean slate. So uh, I take that really serious. So that's true. In my mind, I'm not supposed to have any preconceived ideas of who's going to win. Oh, and, uh, makes sense. And, I, and all these things, like, you know, people, like, I'll tell people that they go, hey, man, who's going to win the fight? Da, 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 da. And I'm like, nah, I, I don't know. Like, no, just me and you. But I really... Uh, you know, because of some experiences I had, I've tried mm -hmm. to really, I feel it's really important to develop that, to really uh, try to have it inside. Like, um, way back in the day, my, remember David Tice? Oh, yeah, David, yeah, David, yeah, Tice. David Tice. Yeah, one time before I, when I first started refereeing, he goes, you know, who do you think's going to win? And I was like, oh, I think so-and-so. You know, this was before, you know, when I very first started. And yeah. he... He was on the internet telling everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Herb said. Herb oh, said. And, and he's refereeing the fight, you know. Oh, and, you know, I looked look. up to Dave. You know what I mean? Right. Dave was my guy. I was like, okay, well, I, I, I don't do that again. As a matter of fact, uh, I should try to uh, foster that inside myself also. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that makes total sense. Yeah. yeah. yeah now, now sense. What, you'll, what you'll learn, and mm -hmm. I haven't talked much about our past, but Herb mm -hmm. and I have been friends for many years that's awesome i mean we go like way back it's over 20 years oh, it's wow. gotta be it's, yeah. it's around that yeah yeah oh so well that. like yeah yeah I mean, right right let's, around let's that. hear a little bit about that yeah because because <laughs> yeah we we started hanging out like in around like 2000 right yeah 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 because um we i think i met you before ahmad had that tournament right right uh -huh. and that was like 2000 2001 right yeah Mm -hmm. I mean, it goes, I mean, I mean, I go back. I remember when Eddie Bravo was a blue belt. Yeah, when he uh -huh. just got it. All right, right. I remember that. In fact, Eddie Bravo competed at that tournament. Oh yeah, the one we had in Oxnard. No, so, oh no, I was thinking about the one that Ahmad had in uh, Compton. Remember that he did this tournament? And oh yeah, everybody showed up, and that was the first time I saw Eddie's game. Eddie had this really interesting. At the time, he would like, he just would line up on your front leg and walk <laughs> up on it and just grab your front leg and sit on half guard. And then do all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, uh -huh. were you refing back then too? Wait, um, is that I think I might have started. I started refing right around then. Yeah. I started refing then, uh, King of the Cave. Uh -huh. Yeah. I mean, and Herb, like, you know, you have those people who say they're going to do something. Yeah. Back in the day, Herb was like, I'm going to be a referee. And I'm taking, oh. this, I'm taking this seriously. And, and I'm, I remember when you were saying, I'm going to be in the UFC. And all I could think about was, man, Dana White ain't ever going to let that happen because what? of his hair. 
Mm-hmm. So my thoughts, you know, I don't know why I even thought uh-huh. about that, but because I it, came like, up. Well, cold you're gonna, or you're gonna, you're gonna yeah. The, yeah, you're gonna no, have to cut that hair because you want to. Yeah. They, they, most referees had to look like they look like cops. I think a lot of them were cops, <laughs> right. and so you know it was the cop look. And uh, I don't know if Dana White had an opinion on it. Um, I don't think he did, but mm-hmm. someone else. I heard that someone had opinion. I don't know some hearsay. Like someone told me, well, so and so said that you're gonna have to cut your hair if you want to do. Didn't this you have to that. at first? You wore like something on it. Uh, probably. I was just trying different things, but I was like, uh, and. Someone told me that. I threatened to call Reverend Al Sharpton on him. <laughs> so I told him I was going to call Reverend Al. Uh, yeah. and, and Reverend Al, I, I remember uh-huh. you actually saying that a long uh-huh. time ago. We laughed about it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Well, now, the interesting thing then is that now I know you because of your hair. Like, so I've never met him before. And I, I'm not as, I'm a fan of UFC, but you know. It's like, it's like flavor But I know clock, him. Right? Exactly. Right, right, so right, right, it's right. your so trademark. Heard, yeah. I've had a long time. So long enough. Yet. For it to grow in reverse. Yeah, so right. he talked about you, and he says, "Yeah, he's got the dread lo- or the mm-hmm. you know long hair." I'm like, "Oh, I know exactly who that is." <laughs> and and you know? and not seeing you for a long period of time, and then seeing you—I mean, you look great. You obviously take care of yourself. Okay. Um, I mean, you do yoga, right? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do a lot of nice. yoga. I mean, yes. so and and with being on the plane, like like how do you stay healthy? You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. our whole thing is like we do talk about yeah. being healthy, but. I mean, you're on the plane constantly. I'm watching you, and you're on continents, like right, two yeah. continents in one week. Okay, so yeah, my jo- my joke is always that yeah, I've been uh, jet lagged since 2006. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, you can't. I'm already jet lagged. That's yeah. my that's my state. But man, um, my uh, travel really ramped up a couple years ago. I started working with a uh, with uh, refereeing fights for a company from Chechnya, ACA, and those guys had a schedule. I think they did 27 fights or something like that in one year so added that to yeah. everything else that mean you know i was on a plane every weekend and often uh because not only for them every one of their fights was an international fight an international flight and then you know also for the ufc and then i was working with a company out of from korea uh, called road and they did fights in china and yeah. so i don't know how many international fights wow. i probably did an international flight every weekend Wow. And um, I, you know, people say, man, it's going to take its toll on you. I, I thought, oh, no, nah, it's not. I'm used to it. But it did. When I took it up that notch, I, by the end of the year, I could not move at all. My hips couldn't move because wow. I can fall asleep on the plane. That's the good thing. But that's also the problem because I right. don't get up and move. Right. So I can, mm-hmm. I can sleep. But, uh, man, I was thinking, man, I'm going to have to do something. Mm-hmm. And I gave uh, yoga a try because I had done it before. I used to do Bikram with my daughters. We used to go oh, do so uh, cool. Bikram yoga. And I take my knees too, and it was fun. And so I remember that made me feel good. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna give it a try. And uh, I've been doing it for um, for over a year. I started in August, and it's great. Like I I can move like a, a normal person again. And nice. I can not only do that, I can do all the movements I'm supposed to do. My movement is my movement has actually gotten better. So uh, wow. next year, my goal is uh, for my birthday. See if I can get my kids to work out with me. Keep doing yoga. And, See how, how nice. I feel. So you, the That's game cool. has changed because, yeah. you know, 25 years ago, mm-hmm. a big strong guy like Herb didn't do yoga. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I think it's great. I, I think it's so cool. Yeah. How many times a week do you? I mean, what's your goal? As I far go as, as much as I can. Actually. Yeah. So what helps I, range of motion? Yeah. I mean, you were uh-huh. showing me. Like, yeah. He's very flexible. I can do all these. I can do all these movements I couldn't do before. Also, it's good for my mind to go there and let some skinny little person tell me what to do. I'm always telling people what to do. <laughs> well, right. You know what I mean? I'm always I know. Telling them what to do. Yeah, yeah. And they make it look so easy, uh, yeah, so yeah. fluid, uh, you know? Like uh, the instructors and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. They're uh, amazing. But they're, they're, the yoga instructors are kind of the opposite of what I'm used to dealing with. You yeah. know, there's this one little skinny little dude, and he's, you know, he's, oh, he's getting me in shape. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> hey, you, uh, I mean, you lose range of motion. I mean, that can quick. limit, yeah. you know, yeah. your quality of life big it, time. Definitely. And so I didn't realize that's what really changed my focus. Like, I I, mean, I don't need to worry about moving something. I just hmm. want to be able to move myself as best I can. And then everything else kind of falls into, into place after that. Oh, you know, I like um, that. I like that. So mm-hmm. back in the day, we used to have these underground matches, like literally, like underground. Remember like uh, yeah. Cage oh, Combat? Wow. You would go in. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. And, and in the octagon, they would have torches, like. Uh-huh. You know what yeah. Like, yeah. Uh-huh. like flames, uh-huh. like in every oh, little gosh. corner, right? Like flames. So you're fighting in the cage, yeah. and there's flames all around you, and it's dark, and people are screaming. Oh mm-hmm. my gosh! Yeah, those are so the, that's those how are the you days. guys met, and in, in that type of thing, that type of. We, yeah, we go mm-hmm. back then. I mean, like, I mean, a lot has changed. Yeah. It's funny. Yeah. Last night I watched uh, Thirty for Thirty, the mm-hmm. whole Chuck Liddell and Tito experience. 
Have you seen it yet? No, no. Uh, so it's on ESPN. Okay. It's 30 for 30 where they show like, they go back and they usually yeah. do a documentary right. on some sports figure. Right. So they're talking about how they had this rival for all these years mm -hmm. um, and how they had a friendship before all that. So they showed mm -hmm. the whole like story. Of, I'd like to watch that because, you know, I know snippets of it, but, you know, uh, uh, you know, what I hear from there, but I don't know the whole story like the way they would tell it. Yeah, yeah. It, it was it was interesting. I can't wait for mm -hmm. you to like, you know, we, we talk about it afterward. Mm -hmm. But there was a part in there that no one's ever really addressed. So I'll never forget. I was with Chuck Liddell uh -huh. and Tito Ortiz. We were up in San Luis Obispo. I don't know if you were with us on this trip, but I remember mm -hmm. we went to a, a place to get some burritos after we worked out. Yeah. And uh, I remember looking at Chuck and Tito and I said, you know, they're going to want you guys to fight each other. And I mean, I see it right now as clear as day. Mm -hmm. They both were like, "Nah, man, we'll never fight." And how long ago was this again? I mean, this was years ago. Like years ago. Yeah. So was this when uh, Chuck first got signed to that deal, like six fight deal or something with the UFC? Yeah, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. I just remember like it was right when Chuck, because you could tell like Chuck would beat Tito in training, mm -hmm. like right. easily, and like handled him like no problem, and you know Chuck was knocking out everybody, and so everyone in training knew. Mm -hmm. That Chuck would win, but everywhere you went, everybody was like T. You know, right, 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 right. <laughs> oh, so everybody in the sport right. knew that that Chuck probably yeah. But everybody he, in the sport but his knew friend had the yeah. belt. Yeah, exactly. And so for a long time, they would be on TV, and Ch and Tito would say, "Man, we said we would never fight each other," and and Chuck would yeah. go, "Man, I ain't never said that." <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "Oh no." Yeah, but yeah, I can right. tell you right now, I was there and I heard it with my own ears. They said they would never fight. Fast forward, they fought, of course. Of course, yeah. That's three times. Uh -huh. That's yeah, crazy. three times. Oh, was it three times? Because they just fought again. Yeah, that was the third one. That was the third time. That wow. was that was Tito's opportunity. Yeah, which yeah. I had a hard time watching that fight. Yeah, I, I yeah I wasn't. Yeah, that was... I, I refereed it. Oh, you oh. did? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, you were yeah. right there. Yeah, so yeah. I don't know. Uh -huh. So who won? <laughs> well, it was the third time. So Tito won. Uh, years later. Okay. Yeah. All right. yeah, Tito. Tito. Many won. years later. I mean, mm -hmm. Chuck was almost wow. fifty. Mm -hmm. You know, not beating up on 50 year olds, but I'm just saying. Right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah, Chuck, yes. And he hadn't fought in like 10 right. years. Uh -huh. um, but, you know. And Cheeto's what? He's about 40? 40, 43, 44. Yeah, he was like six years younger. younger. Yeah. He was a little younger. And he had been active. Yeah, he was active. Right. You know, like when someone's watching like the fights, and I'm sure mm -hmm. people ask you a thousand questions about different fighters <laughs> and all mm -hmm. that. Do they ever like come to you and ask like, how is it that a lot of these guys are able to stay healthy? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, right. people, yeah. And let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to say that I don't really know all the things that these do because it's incredible the what you have to the what it, what training takes out of you. Mm -hmm. And these guys are always on the cutting edge of what it takes to be healthy. They're always doing something different. You know, I'm sure you know a lot about it. Oh yeah, I mean, uh -huh. watching the whole game because you know, like so I was heavy in the MMA world, right? And we were all training together. Like, loving the sport, still love the sport. Right. Mm -hmm. And then Fernando Vargas, the boxer, called me one day and says, hey, you know, he wanted me to help him with his weight loss and making right. weight and his nutrition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when I went over there and found out how much money you can make, uh -huh. I was like, hey, <laughs> right, I guess right, I won't right. be, <laughs> uh -huh. I won't be doing the MMA for a while. Right. Yeah, yeah, he just disappeared. I got uh -huh. just pulled right into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then when you're in those camps with those guys, like, the way a lot of the MMA guys are starting to be, mm -hmm. I mean, you're like in camp. Yeah. So, you know, you're, you're looking totally at focused. 10, 12 weeks of your life. Like, right. my first camp was at Catalina Island. Mm -hmm. We literally, like, was there. Oh, wow. Right, you literally moved there. 12 right? weeks, didn't leave. Oh, nice. I mean, I mm -hmm. haven't been back to the island. Since then? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Memories, man. Like, that was tough. It was that tough, was, huh? Yeah. Yeah, well, I remember, I mean, when we used to hang out, so Robert was always really, uh, well, he's who he is. He's Robert Ferguson. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I was always a person who was kind of challenged with my, uh, what I was eating. <laughs> that was a challenge for me that was one of the things that uh, i've gotten a lot better with that now i i, uh, I make good choices now but um nice. i i didn't um i didn't make good choices before rob would try to you know he's, he's kind of slowly really? but surely you, guided guide me in the right direction like so uh, how how do you feel now after that fried chicken <laughs> say, that, was rob, that was usually rob's thing so he'd sit Just and watch you yeah he watched me eat like um like some pancakes or something like that and wait I was yawning and he goes, So, how do you feel? <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember those days. Oh, yeah. my God. I could, uh -huh. I could totally imagine that. Uh -huh. I well, I mean, I was, a, I was more of a Nazi back then. Mm -hmm. Oh, were you? Like, oh. I was like how many nutritionists are today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, if it's white, it ain't right. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've, I mean, I've grown a lot. 
And yeah. I've come to understand that you don't have to give up everything. Right. You, there's mm-hmm. ways to make it work. Yeah, I just know he likes to tease. Yeah, no, I've seen him. You know, yeah. Back in the day, he worked hard. <laughs> remember, when he got, remember he got into an argument with that lady over that shake? Uh, oh on the way God. back from Arizona, what? they were selling a healthy. We were on the way back from Arizona. We're coming <laughs> on the ten. There's this place that uh, sells like you know where you stop and buy all the fruits and dates, and they had shakes and stuff in there. I can't remember and they were supposed that. to yeah. be healthy. And I am Robert, and he's like, she's like, no, it's low in fat, and you're like, no, it's high in trans. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay, well, I'm oh, glad see, I don't really remember yeah, that. See, uh, I could uh, yeah, see, I could totally. Totally mm. picture that. No, but he was cool, kind <laughs> to me. He wasn't hard on me, but like, yeah. Some of his, some of the guys who were around, who were they're like, man, her you've been hanging out with us for like six months, and yeah. you're still eating, eating that. Well, tell me, what was your uh, heaviest really? weight? You ever tell people like, what oh, you okay, used the, to the weigh? heaviest okay. weight I've ever been was probably like two seventy something, two seventy. Right mm-hmm. now, I'm around or between, right around two twenty, two twenty five now. Oh. When I feel good, because um, I I've been. I mean, you know, that travel and all that stuff kind of got me heavy. So we, usually when I'm feeling my best is when I'm under 220. Okay. And that's when I, I feel good. It's like your target. That's my target. Just, what I, just where I'm at. That's where I, I usually feel pretty good there. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I had a question for you, Herb. <clears throat> and this is something that I've, I've shared and had conversations with people about. And I know it ties into the psychology. But when you have like a celebrity like Arnold Schwarzenegger or, right. or Eddie Murphy, like, I mean, top, top celebrities. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've watched their eyes look at you and other fighters as they're like, they're the stars. Uh It's like stars, Hollywood stars look at the people in the fight game as like major celebrities. Have you noticed that? Well, you know, to be uh, sometimes it's always surprising to me when it is like, you know, when I meet somebody and they and they look at me and they look, they're surprised to see me. Yeah. I'm always just surprised right. to see them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or or you know, I, uh, or they have the fights and I realize they're a fan and I talk to them and they're happy to talk to me and 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 they know who I am. It's all because the funniest thing about it is that MMA has been my uh, life for all. So I feel it's almost like a like you're in a pool. Like if you're in a swimming pool and you're treading water, right. you're surrounded by water and you're treading water. Now, if you're treading water in the ocean, your pool got bigger, but you're doing the same thing. Right. So I, from the inside out, I didn't realize, I realized the sport grew and I know it's growing. But when I think watching it from the inside, you don't really have a perspective on just how much it's grown. You know what I mean? Right. Because mm-hmm. it just kind of, because I've been doing the same thing I've always been doing, you know. Well, it sounds like you're grounded as well, mm-hmm. you know, as far as, far as that is. Because I'm sure that maybe not everybody can be like that. Like some people can get like, you know. Really know that get they're... Get the big head. Like, yeah, get the big if, head. Imagine if Holly Berry was wanting to take a picture with you. Right. Right? Which, like, what? which is the case, right? Mm-hmm. Holly Berry sees right. her. She's like, hey, look, let's get a picture. Right. I'd be like, yeah. what? Like, I want a picture with you. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, you know, I think one of the other things about it is probably because of the nature of my job. Mm-hmm. The nature of my job, for me to be good at my job, I definitely got to realize it's not about me, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. So that's my job. My mm-hmm. job is to, is to be a servant and it's all about these guys. So I think that helps. Yeah. And I think that also everybody in our sport I think MMA is just now guys are starting to really rock star it up. I think everybody was always so grateful in the sport in general, even the fighters, just that, you know, I think still people say that MMA athletes are more accessible to their fans than the other athletes. Always, mm-hmm. you know, these guys never say no to a picture. You know, they're never charging okay. anybody for a picture. They're always, and a lot of, there's a lot of celebrities who aren't like that. But right. just about everybody. So fans love MMA because, you know, whenever we're somewhere, these guys are all posted up in the lobby. And they know no one's gonna say no. So, oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah I mean, really it's, cool. it's 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 a different it's a different beast. Right, right. Yeah. You know, it's like mm-hmm. um, as a nutritionist, fighters now in MMA are starting to see the real value in bringing someone like me in, right, to, mm-hmm. to help them. Mm-hmm. But they're not making the money that a lot of the boxers are making, so they can't pay what the boxers are paying. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, like like you get a you know, the average guy that's pretty talented in MMA may get paid two hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Not average. Like that's and that's an amazing payday. Right. Whereas that same level of fighter in, in boxing, boxing is getting one point five two point three million dollars, you know, and then you see it upward from there. It's just, right. it's just different. But how many boxers yeah. are making that? A good amount of them. There's a lot of them doing it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, like right now, if you look at the 147 pound division, you have like six guys that everybody's talking about. Mm-hmm. They all make a uh, million plus. Is that just because uh-huh. it's been around longer as a like an organized sport? Yeah, and was, and I think it's it's all about the inception, right? Because mm-hmm. a lot of people in the world of MMA, yeah, they were wrestlers, and when mm-hmm. you wrestle, you don't pay your instructor. Mm-hmm. 
You're right? That you don't you just go and wrestle. Because wrestling wasn't oh, okay. professional. Right. Yeah, you huh. weren't making money. Yeah, you just wrestle. Right. So everyone's used to just wrestling and working together. Whereas mm-hmm. in boxing, the the sparring partners are getting paid good. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Everyone's it's a sport, getting paid. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah, there are like specific and, roles yeah. for that. Yeah. Okay. And then also there's you know, there's a difference in the way our sport is set up. You know, our sport is um you know, boxing is boxing is is driven around the boxing, around the boxer, you know, and in our sport it's driven a little bit more around the brands of the promotion and mm-hmm. around the athletes, you know. So you can't say name a boxing promotion and say, We're going here and they're gonna sell out without saying who's fighting. Right. Whereas you know, the UFC can say, Well, we're coming here mm-hmm. and not even mention who's on the card and, you know, start selling tickets. Right. People are like, UFC's coming. I know it's gonna be good. I'm gonna watch oh, it. Cool. You get so, that? Yeah. Oh, interesting. And it's interesting you bring that up because me and Rico Ciparelli, mm-hmm. I remember one day we were training and Rico was like, you know, the problem with, with the whole MMA world, which he didn't say it like that. Uh-huh. He said, uh, is, is, there's no name. He goes, in the boxing, you're a bo- you, know, you have a boxer. Right. And in wrestling, you have a wrestler. And, and no holds barred, a Valley Tudo, uh, mm-hmm. cage fighting, right? We had all these different names that were being used, right. mm-hmm. but we didn't have a name. So if I fought in the cage, am I a cage fighter? Am I a no holes barred guy? Like, oh. like right, right, what right, am right. I? I see. Uh-huh. Okay. And it was during that time that I had written an article for um, martial arts training, mm-hmm. and it was called Mixed Martial Arts. I forgot. I forgot that. Yeah, I think he might. Did you? You might have invented. I, I feel that I coined yeah. the name. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. And, I, and I'm, yeah, and I don't. You know, there's no one's out there. You know. I'm not getting any credit for it. Right. But I believe that the first person to say it live on TV was Art Davy, who mm-hmm. was a very good friend of mine. And I remember that our, I just, what I remember is that uh, it was kind of a movement in our sport because before that we, we had started being called uh, NHB, No Holds Barred. Right. NHB, and then, another right. one. <laughs> that was what it was called before right. MMA. And then people started putting on their uh, MMA slash NHB. And it was the movement. The movement to make MMA was to was we MMA was representing the direction of turning it into a sport, right? And having better rules and and having a vision that one day it's going to be something that you don't have to do. Because we before back then we it wasn't legal to do it in the uh, in California, right? Oh, that type of fighting. That's what yeah, you're saying. You had, they were, you'd be you like guys underground. Would be on Indian stuff, yeah, we right? had to go to Indian reservation or underground. Oh, no uh huh. So the ones in and yeah underground like so there uh, you'd have some kind of so that you can do it underground like maybe right. if the police show up you're going to pretend like it's pro wrestling or something. right you know what I mean? right, like, <laughs> wrong get the story see, straight yeah right? i've seen that happen before like that that was their plan like that okay. was when i fought dave Dang. and a, they uh, were saying that we yeah. may have to like uh-huh. act like we're pro wrestling really? yeah. yeah and so they so so one time i was at a show where it happened like you know the police showed up and the guys went into their plan like okay the fight stopped one guy climbed up on top of the cage and put like a wrestling mask on no way. <laughs> he was like sitting there doing goofy stuff and, and like, like and the then, nacho libre thing yeah 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 exactly <laughs> yeah. exactly and i remember the police came in and he laughed like what are you doing and then just arrested the promoter and, you get off that cage oh <laughs> my god that's like funny. like okay do the plan do the plan and then the plan was so ridiculous. I remember looking like, this is ridiculous. Is this going to work? Right. And the cop was like, no, this is not working. <laughs> no, I'm not arresting good. somebody. <laughs> Jeez, I talk about it coming a long way. Mm, it's come yeah. a long Gosh. way. Gosh. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, like a lot of people, and I really wanted to be heavy into it. I mean, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah. Like I really, like I, in uh-huh. UFC 9, because I was so into it, um, Art Davey gave me a chance to be a, ref, uh, a judge. So I was mm-hmm. a judge in UFC 9. The first time they didn't do a tournament. And that was the oh, night wow. Don Fry right, right, uh-huh. fought, and uh, I think it was uh, Dan Severn and, and Shamrock. Right. Uh, be, a, uh, be a Teddy. I remember he just got just destroyed. Oh, like, okay, yeah, like yeah. It was, it was single matches. Yeah. Uh-huh. Schultz fought that night. Mm-hmm. So it was a Big Daddy King. Yeah, it was Big Daddy that he fought. Big Daddy, uh-huh. Yeah. Big Daddy Goodrich. Yeah, Big Daddy <laughs> Goodrich, yes. Uh-huh. And, uh, oh, wow. Yeah, so I was a judge. And then I got stripped because... The people who owned it, uh, I think it was Sigma 4 or whatever, right, Entertainment. Right. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I wrote an article because I had a magazine. I wrote an article talking about steroid use in the, in the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Like some of the guys uh-huh. are doing roids. Uh-huh. Now, I was just being a journalist. Right, 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 right. That was uh-huh. it. Uh-huh. I was banned. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. But it was t- journal- oh, being a journalist because was our sport was a lot on the, these boards, the underground and stuff like that. And the journalists all had beef. The journalists like, yeah. You guys oh. like that was like you had like you were writing your stuff and then there was the other guy, what's his name, who who he was he was a journalist too, right? 
Oh yeah, there was there was a few, and you guys didn't get along at all. Okay. I think because wow. of, that's what I remember. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, back then, like I remember, I wrote an article in Black Belt Magazine called "How to Defeat Brazilian Jiu Jitsu." Yeah, that's what and it was. People yeah. just like Got like mad. the so at that time, the majority of the people who were in the in the field, yeah, uh, in this in this space, were Brazilian Jiu Jitsu people, right? And so they didn't look at it as. Oh, that's a cool article. That's interesting. They're like, what the They're hell like, are you doing? Uh, he's against us. <laughs> right, 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 right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, you know, the only he other was person that was very verbal that was kind of on the on the opposite side of that was Frank Shamrock. Mm-hmm. Like, oh. Frank was always, you know, eclectic and right, eccentric. Right, right. Like, he mm-hmm. just was his, his own person. Mm-hmm. And he believed that you train everything. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, we've come a long way since that time. Right, yeah. I mean, right. We, everybody does everything really well. Everybody, yeah. Yeah, so the game has changed. Oh my god! But it was, yeah, because it was turning into what, um, because what mixed martial arts was was everyone had these different sports that they're doing, right? And when you're doing this sport, you make an agreement to follow certain unwritten rules so you can best showcase what you're doing. Right. So if you're doing karate or taekwondo, you're going to say, oh, well, we're going to fight, but we're going to stay about this far from each other so we can kick each other. I'm not going to get up here because neither of us can do what we want to do, and so. Ah. That was one of the things that make uh, that uh, the sport did is it broke all those rules and uh, really opened people's minds. But then some uh, it started happening that way with the jujitsu, right? People started doing certain things, playing into those rules. So yeah, it it all just changed. Oh, wow. uh-huh. I mean, who would you say was the first? Like the way we look at MMA guys today, mm-hmm. who was one of the first like OGs back in the day that was doing what we're doing now? Okay, so there's a lot of different play ways to change. I thought that Don Fry was one of the first to change it up way back then. He was one of the first guys who actually could box and wrestle, right? right? <laughs> Some sort of boxing and wrestling. But then um, you could say then Maurice Smith, he came and changed it. Um, I would say who was, but was I think. Brazilian guy. Remember the one guy that was stomp, mm-hmm. step, stomp on your feet real hard? Oh, Marco Huas. Yes, Marco, Marco Huas. Huas uh-huh. And then what's his name? Um uh, man, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll come back. Yeah, okay. Cause, yeah, yeah. Because there was uh, there was another guy who was another Brazilian who was really uh, Bustamante. Who, Bustamante. Bustamante. Really, man. Yeah. Who, he was my favorite for a long mm-hmm, time. Yeah. So you know what I mean by that, right? It's guys who could punch. Right. They could box. They could wrestle. So they, they could they, do jujitsu. They, they were mix full it up. round. Right. right. Like right. well rounded. Well rounded. Yeah, yes. I get it. I think George Saint Pierre uh, changed the game a lot. Now, do typically do do athletes they come in with like a stronger discipline and then they're, you know, excellent in some of the other things, or or is now the trend to be like, basically excellent in all that? I think it's I think it's both. I think mm-hmm. guys come in so c- c- people can train mixed martial arts. Mm-hmm. When we first started, you had to go over here to train this, go there to train that. Yeah. So now people, kids are training mixed martial arts and everything while they're kids and growing right. up doing it mm-hmm. and learning. But still, I think there's people who who come in and they were, you know, they had their sport that they competed in, like wrestling or something like that. Okay. A lot of the a lot of the wrestlers do really well. Right. Mm-hmm. Like Ben, like ben you get a guy who's, like, let's say, been to the Olympics for wrestling. Right. And that's going to be his dominant sport. Right. Right. right? And then mm-hmm. he's learning how to box. Right. Because every time, like, when I was uh, working with all the boxers, mm-hmm. more and more I started seeing a lot of the MMA guys coming to do some training with boxers. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. And I'm not going to mention any names, but let me tell you, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I remember this 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 Russian kid who was like three and zero as a pro uh, was training, and so one of the MMA guys who's really good in jujitsu yeah. showed up to get some sparring in. And mm-hmm. They put on the really big gloves, uh-huh. the big headgear, man. In that first round, <laughs> you got tore up. You saw the difference. Like if you just try to if if, if you're if you're kind of boxing, yeah, and you get in there with a really good boxer. Man, it ain't gonna go well. Wow. Yeah, and and also boxing because there's so many there's so many movements that you do that to be a good boxer, all mm-hmm. the pivot work you're doing, you know, that's the the takes it up to another level, the mm-hmm. footwork and the, the pivot work. work, and all that pivoting. You do that pivoting, you're not gonna you you know you're gonna get taken down so easy. Right. You know, so a lot of the things that you, the difference between a really good boxer and somebody who's kind of just a fighter who wants to punch those things aren't going to translate that well to MMA. Right. Uh, yeah. And when, when Connor fought Floyd, uh-huh. like, oh, right. what was your thoughts when you were watching that go down? I didn't watch it. 
You still haven't seen it? No, I wasn't really that interested in watching <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm happy well, they did it. So don't don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking right. it. I'm happy it happened. I'm happy. I mean, I'm glad they did it. I'm glad it brought eyes to our sport. I'm glad that uh, that they uh, that they brought eyes to, you know, it, it got a lot of attention to combat sports. So anything that does that is a good thing. Yeah. But I wasn't really in, that interested in watching Conor McGregor fight. Uh, Mayweather in a boxing match. Right. I would be interested. I would watch if there was some sort of limited rules, like halfway there. I'd watch. I'd be interested in watching a kickboxing match between the two. Hmm. That'd be interesting. Yeah. So or like I, or a, I'd like to see it broken up, where it's like maybe the first three rounds they is, box, and then mm-hmm. the other. And if it goes to the fourth round, they got to change gloves, go from the boxing right. gloves to the to the MMA uh-huh. gloves, right? Uh-huh. And then the the next three rounds, right? Uh-huh. That would have been interesting because then Floyd would have had to get him out of there. Right, right, right. right. He, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, Floyd, Floyd, yeah, yeah. If you, then we'd really see Floyd, yeah, fight for him. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. would have been very interesting. Uh-huh. Everybody would have been like glued. Yeah, uh-huh. for yeah, sure. yeah. Would you be, would, but a kickboxing match wouldn't happen either. They wouldn't be. No. That, yeah. I mean, boxers do not like getting kicked in the legs. Mm-mm. No. <laughs> that does not feel good. Uh-huh. Well, you know, in, in the world, like I used to do this seminar where I would use boxing as the metaphor. Mm -hmm. to teach like team building and leadership Uh right because in the world of boxing you have you have the person who's going to sit go in there and fight Mm -hmm. and right but around that person there's a team right so you have Mm -hmm. a manager you have the boxing trainer you got the family and then you know there's like these cool little metaphors that you could put in there yeah and whenever i think of a referee i see like the person who is the glue to everything Mm mm-hmm you know, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. So you ever like talk on that or like use I that do. with your I, kids for I, analogies and well, stuff? Well, as an analogy, I, I mean, uh, I, I, ref, I, want, I used to uh, compare it to playing the bass. You're there to, you know, provide a very steady environment. Like you say, the right. glue, because the glue, the bass is the glue in a band, right? So you're the glue that's, that's connecting everything together like that. Um, also, I think, um, you know, uh, another analogy I used to use, my father uh, worked uh, for the railroad. He was a um, conductor. And so uh, he had to know all these different jobs and also had to get people to uh, believe in him and trust him that it's going to be okay. And so, like, that's a big part of it is uh, with a referee is um, is the relationships, right. is managing those relationships and knowing that uh, mm-hmm. having people trust you to do what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. I mean, you, well, you see how you see that? Like, yeah. I mean, there's some cool parenting skills when For you sure. look at use the referee as a metaphor yeah. because mm-hmm. – most of the time, people get so focused on the two guys that are in the ring right. or in the cage <clears throat> that they don't realize what makes it a great fight mm-hmm. is the referee. Good refereeing, yeah. Because if you have a poor referee, what could have been a great fight ends up ending in disaster. Right. That's in all sports, I think, really. Well, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, the thing with our sport is, uh, you know, if uh, some referee messes up in some of the other sports, I mean, it's really unfortunate. Mm-hmm. They, have, they didn't have a fairly arbitrated game, but... Right. Uh, if you mess up in our sport, yeah, there's some consequences. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh. Now you were were you the referee when that, that was it Tim Sylvia years ago that snapped his? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was a, that was. <laughs> what a, happened? Uh-huh. So I should. Right, you got to tell. Okay. Yeah, I got to so, yeah. so I'll tell that story, and I and actually I learned a lot about refereeing in that too. So, um, all right. So that this was a I've told this story a lot because this is a a big match for me. So Tim Sylvia versus Frank Mir. Mm-hmm. I refereed Frank Mir uh, uh, quite a few times, and Frank Mir uh, is. He's a uh, Frank Mir. When he goes, he's a heavyweight. When he goes after something, he goes hard and he cranks. Right. And so Frank Mir has broken some bones. So anyway, in this match, <laughs> Tim Sylvia he uh, he gets Tim Sylvia in an arm bar. Okay. Tim Sylvia's doing what he's supposed to do to defend it. Frank Mir does what he does, even though he gets it uh, the elbow uh, to defend the arm bar. You want to get the elbow out past the fulcrum, okay. past the hips, because that's what the guy's doing. He's using his whole spine. Right. To, right. Uh, you know, hyperextend your arm. Oh, got it. So okay. your arm is your arm can't fight the strength of someone's spine. Right. So one of the ways to defend it is you want to get your elbow past the uh, fulcrum, right? Got past it. the hip. Yes. And so um, he did that, but Tim uh, Frank Mir, you know, for one, he has techniques uh, for that. Also, he's really strong. Oh, he cranked, and he broke his arm right here. Oof. So right there at the for- forearm, he yes. broke both uh, like, the ooh. radius and the ulna, mm. and. Uh, the um, I saw it break, but no one else saw it break. So I stopped uh, the fight, and um, 
Yeah, this is a. It was. It was kind of interesting because I stopped the fight and the the fans started going crazy. Cr uh, yeah. People were throwing things. And Tim felt like oh, he didn't man. want you to fight. No, he didn't want to stop the fight. Uh, his corner. <laughs> I remember his corner is going to come in. Crazy. Like the Militich team, they're out there. I look over and they're like wrestling with these big Samoans. They're trying to jump inside the oh, cage. They're trying to keep gosh. them out. I'm making my plans on what I'm going to do. I, at that point, I'm going, okay. I, there might be a riot. <laughs> Can I get I'm, out of I'm, here? I'm, I'm, I knew which cop yeah. I was going to get next to. This one cop was really big. If they threw things, I was going to try to get underneath the cage. Um, like exit so, plan. Yeah. So, but uh, anyway, the doctor comes in, and you know, the doctor uh, he tricks the doctor, and the and you know, I guess, and the doctor says there's nothing wrong with him, and then uh. she leaves, and uh, I stopped the fight. But Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan, yeah, he uh, he saved me because he found it. He was looking, and he found the point where the arm broke. Oh. So he shows it to everyone, and everybody's like, oh, oh okay, okay, you're right. So that, that was, so it was oh. almost like a, they, they did like an instant replay on it. Yeah, they did an oh. instant replay. I didn't think that that was going to happen, you know. Uh, and so uh, that right there was uh, actually, you know, because if you're doing a good job as a referee, you're not supposed to be noticed. You know what I mean? And so mm -hmm. that's when someone noticed it because you're like, okay, this is what could have happened if the referee did a bad job. We thought he did a bad job, but actually did a good job, so. Right. Yeah, everybody liked me. But, <laughs> I, um, you know, I was kind of upset. I thought the doctor had kind of left me under the table. But what it did teach me more about my job, because bottom line is everything's got to be my fault. So mm -hmm. um, it taught me more about how that uh, that's one of the most that's the most important interaction that we have as officials, referees is with the physician. And so yeah. it taught me a lot about how to how to manage that and uh, how to. Yeah. Yeah. Makes and, sense. and I guess yeah. really to kind of stay focused on. On your job instead right. of what everybody else is thinking. Right. right. Yeah. You know, because you're seeing hype. stuff. It's kind of like when Ben and, mm -hmm. and Robbie Lawler right, they right. had their match. Yeah. I mean, you can only go by what what you see. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So even with the with the doctors, for me, you know, I just stayed out of her way. But she, I mean, thinking about it, she doesn't know anything about submission. All she saw is a puzzle. These guys are like a puzzle. Right. And then I bring her in, and she talks to the guy now. The fighter, you know, I mean, uh, Tim Sylvia, he's he's Tim Sylvia, you mm -hmm. know. So in his mind, he he's misguided him because he wants to fight to start again. He wants <laughs> right. to fight again with a broken arm. I mean, you understand this? Yeah. His insane. arm is it's like uh -huh. literally snapped. That's he insane. wants to fight with a broken arm. Yeah. I asked him about it uh, after I saw him uh, later on that night in the casino. Crazy. And um, I said, <laughs> "What was your plan? What do you want?" He goes, right. "Well, he goes. I knew I had a minute before the pain got really bad, so I was going to knock him out with my other hand." Oh, jeez. That was, that, was the plan. Plan. that was the plan. <laughs> okay. That was the plan. That was the plan. One-handed uh -huh. approach. Yeah. Like I could, I could do that. So, like, how is there like a rule of thumb? Like, how close do you get in there? Let's say when it's all tight and you're trying to watch. Like, how close can you get? Without well, you know, risk it's different for for yourself. different things. So different. That's part of one of the things we do is we yeah. move in close for things and we move back. And yeah. you know, things. It's also kind of counterintuitive because some of the things that you think you want to be close at. The best information you get is from further back. So you see guys in chokes, and you're trying to get in there real close to look oh. at his face and see the choke. Right. But all the information you're going to get is actually from his legs and mm. things like that. So that's a, so huh. it's a delicate thing. of You want to have a good angle, but you mm -hmm. want to be uh, close enough to see certain things and be yeah. able to intervene and have a good angle, but also far enough away so you can get the whole picture because the whole picture is what gives you information. So mm -hmm. when you're choking, you know, when you're waiting for someone to go unconscious, that's how you're going to uh, see it, especially with something that's like um, something that's uh, like, let's say, like a Von Flu choke. You know what I mean? That's where you're going to mm -hmm. get that information, you know. So that's Von crazy. Flu what choke. What is that? Yeah. So that's that's a friend of ours that mm -hmm. we've known yeah. for many years. Uh, <laughs> that's did he his put name. you in that choke? No. Uh, <laughs> he, for, no. He, they, he's the one who did it in the UFC and made it popular. So okay. the, before the choke, I, I don't know. I don't think it had a name. They called it a side choke or something like that. Mm. The first time I saw uh, someone do it was Giuliano Prado. Mm. I saw Giuliano Prado do it on Bow Quatch, and nobody had really seen it. Bow was out for a little bit. Wow. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I use that in my uh, – I do a referee course, a referee training course. I'm doing it this uh, in November, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, just so in case like so people want to be referees. Yeah. Very and cool. that's one of the videos that I use in that course for a lot of things is talking about just what you were talking about. Right. Position and where you want to be in a position and, and – uh, so you oh. could become a referee, mm -hmm. right? You can go take herbs. I will. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. all over that. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That'd be awesome. No, it was funny. Like, uh, so she lives where Brian used to live. Okay. Brian Peterson. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Um, or that's where you grew up. Oh, yo, in Lemonwood. Yeah. Yeah. So in that in that area, uh, she always talks about how you know she used to get into it and had you know fights. <laughs> okay. Got into a few <laughs> fights. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I got into a few fights. <laughs> and I go, okay, so how how did that work out? You I said Lemonwood. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. It's like it's just it's a. You can ask a, my family. A community. 
uh, in Oxnard. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. Yeah. So she says that you know she used to throw down when I she did. was a kid. Uh huh. Yeah. And I was like you know, but I didn't know the fancy choke holds or anything like that. It was just, just grit. Just grit. <laughs> 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 well, grit. Grit's the first ingredient. You need that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Wow, that's interesting. Now, see, you would have you would have done better if you had a referee. If you think about it. That, so that, actually having a referee opponent, would give yeah. me more confidence, right? Uh-huh. Because you know that if it got really bad and you can't defend yourself, right. then right. someone is in there to like save right, you. Right, 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 right. Because uh-huh. you removed that like back in the day, right uh-huh. before they had time limits. Right, right. Those yeah. guys. Uh-huh. Just, that's true. <laughs> I mean, they were going at it like, for I, long periods of time. Yeah, and it's true. And sometimes now as I watch fights... Yeah, I like when the referee steps in because I start. I'm like one of those people that starts to feel bad mm-hmm. for the one that's really losing, and it's obvious. I'm like, oh man, just stop it, just stop it. Yeah, but that's <laughs> not what they want. I know. Well, they believe that most. Some of these guys have so much belief in themselves. Yeah. They know. They know they have a way of winning. You know. Yeah, that's one of the things that um, I learned a lot from Robert. Robert was always, as a coach, he was always focusing on how to win. So I don't know if you remember this one time. Uh, who, someone was gonna fight. Uh, who was he going to fight? I think some one of the guys was going to fight someone. And uh, I was just thinking about how good this guy is he's going to fight. Mm-hmm. And I was when I did about five minutes of all the things he does good. And Rob's like, okay, so now that's, that's out of the way. Uh, how are we going to win? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Well, you know, you know what's mm-hmm. interesting? We used to do this drill where let's say that you were, you were very athletic. Right. right. And I teach you. I said, look, you're just going to get behind her. You, you, when you fight this girl. She's mm-hmm. been doing it for years. Your job is to get behind her. Right. No matter what. Even if there's a, you could punch her in the face, you could, you could hurt her arm, pass all that up. Your right. job is to get, get behind. behind her and choke her. That's all I want you to do. Uh-huh. And whenever we would do that, mm-hmm. the outcome 90% of the time was we would win because the person was single focused. Right. 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 Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of like, so when I look at Ben, if his goal is, I am gonna. I am gonna take you down. Uh-huh. Right, right, right. right. Uh-huh. It's like no matter what, yeah. everything else is a distraction. I am taking you down. For a long time, that would work. Mm-hmm. But now you're starting to see the creme de la creme. Mm-hmm. Yeah. These are, these athletes, everyone's athletic, mm-hmm. and oh, everyone yeah. knows how to break that rhythm. That mm-hmm. single focus, right? Right. I mean, yeah. Look what happened to Ben. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it can happen, right? right? So if someone takes you out of your game, then what? Then you're exposed. Right. Right. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so a there's point. a way, different ways of approaching it. So, like, kind of that approach is, okay, I have a few tools that are really good, you know, and right. uh, and I know how I'm going to win with these tools. And right. I don't have to worry about it. I'm not going to bring any of the ones that aren't that good. I'm going to bring, like, uh, like my cousin. My cousin's a mechanic. When he comes to work on my car, I was surprised because he would, he would only show up with just the tools he needed. He already knew before he came over here exactly oh, wow. what tools he would need. Nice. And he'd show up with just those. Or, he knew exactly what yeah. he needed to do. Mm-hmm. And would, yeah. you, nice. would, you, would you say one of the, the main tools is conditioning? Oh, yeah. Conditioning. For sure. Because there's a lot of people that I bet you've watched, like, in the first round, that mm-hmm. if they don't win that first round because of their lack of conditioning, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's, it's going to be over for them. Yeah, yeah. No matter <laughs> what. Yeah. If you, if you can't breathe, you're not going to be. No, no matter right. how fancy your techniques are, you're not yeah. going to be doing anything. Uh, it's yeah. impressive because even when they're like on the on the ground, like in a hold, mm-hmm. I guess I don't know if that's the technical term, but even that, how tiring that could be. It just it, people don't realize, I think, mm-hmm. how tiring that can be alone, just when they're on the ground like that. And yeah, it's exa- yeah, it's exhausting, and that's also the ability to be able to relax in that situation. Right. And there's different ways to relax at different uh, times. This guy Woodson, um, he's a new up and coming guy in the UFC. He just fought at this card in um, in Boston. Right. This guy, he's just, everything is like this. He can do it all day. And nice he can and just throw and throw, like really relax. Like the Diaz loose. brothers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, just loose and relax. Like somebody else, that relax is almost almost more important than conditioning. Because uh, like Butterbean, for example. Remember Butterbean? Oh, yeah. I, okay, man, I have so much respect for Butterbean. I've seen Butterbean breathe hard walking up a few stairs. And then I've seen him get in a ring and... And fight round after round <laughs> because to him he's so relaxed. It's just like he's like he's like he's cooking. You know, he's like doing something else. He's right. like yeah, becomes mechanical almost. It's just yeah, doesn't all that other stuff like how we, yeah, it just well. amazed me how that man could you know even fight one five minute round. Maybe maybe he's wow. um, consuming some cannabis. Maybe that's just, <laughs> and I say that because you know when I was doing some work with Frank Shamrock, he used to say that 
like all those matches he had with Boss Rutten, and mm-hmm. he would always be consuming cannabis. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. He goes, he was, you know, and I think of like that huh. one fight with him and Boss when they're smacking uh-huh. each other and laughing. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> He's all yeah. relaxed. I mean, they're literally like smacking each other in the face and, and they're laughing and like smiling and like uh-huh. just going back and forth. Like, and it's heck? funny because there was the two doing that because, um, because remember at the time that was Pancrase, right? Right. So they're the only ones who were, were really doing that because the, the culture of Pancrase was like on the ground. When we're on the ground, I'm not going to pound you out. I'm just going to hit you enough and you respect the fact that I could be hitting you. So you move so you give me something else that I can grab. Remember? That's how right. they would oh. fight. But then these two maniacs just started. <laughs> <laughs> Before it was a really respectful thing. I'm not going to keep slap. I'm not here to just right. slap you into the face. and move. I'm going to give you a couple of slaps and, and then, then you're going to move because right. you're respecting it. You know, like an unspoken. So role. I'm not gonna slap you too hard. Well, you know the uh, the only person, and tell me if I'm wrong on this, mm-hmm. but the only person that can walk to like a UFC event or some big MMA event, yeah, and you have all these guys, a lot of them shaved heads, tats all over the bodies, really good shape. Everybody's giving me that look, like I can just I, I'm, I'm rip gonna your head t- off. rip your head off, right. right? It's like you're you're like the guy that's. Walking down, you're high fiving this guy, high fiving that guy, <laughs> because everybody wants to like the referee. Yeah, yeah, everybody's people. Most people are pretty nice to me. Yeah. So uh, when yeah. they're making like decisions, like mm-hmm. like Dana White or something from the coming from like the the executive room at the UFC, do they call you and get your opinion? Never. Yeah, I don't know anything about all those decisions. Matter of fact, I don't even know how I get hired. I just, sometimes they call people call me mm-hmm. because it's different everywhere you go. It's a, sometimes the UFC has more to say about it. Or the promotion does. Sometimes okay. it's the athletic commission. Uh, sometimes they send them a list and then they vote and they decide. Oh, who's going to be so, a ref? For who's going to be a ref okay. for the match? That's just to ke- keep things unbiased and yeah. completely mm-hmm. fair. It's, so like in Nevada, uh, if you, for the championship match, it's always uh, the commission decides. So it's in a public forum. So usually people know before I do because the journalists will go to that uh, forum and they watch them vote and they'll write an article right after. Okay. So someone will call me and say, yeah, you got the big match. So you, Sweet. Are you, are you familiar with, uh, his name is slipping me, he's good friends with Big John, uh, boxing ref. What's his name? Um, I'm, that's, his name is slipping me, and we're, okay. he's actually my friend. If you say his name. Okay, um, Nady, is he, does he? Uh, j- he's mostly in California. Okay. You're starting so- to see him everywhere. Okay. Oh, uh, I know you. Uh, Jack Reese. Jack Reese. Uh-huh. Sorry, Jack. I apologize. Uh-huh. He's like, Can we cut that. Can I, we didn't cut that part? I didn't eat enough this uh-huh. morning. No, that but, always happens to me. But yeah. like you, like when I'm with Jack, mm-hmm. like we'll be at a restaurant, uh-huh. and you guys are very like, like in the middle. Like they don't favor any fighters. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you guys are just, just throw, like you're. Yeah. I don't know. You're you're it's like cold. Well, no, it's it's uh it's uh you know what I mean? Because uh, they don't they don't push to to, to any side. They don't right. favor any. I think that uh, I mean I I that uh that neutral. I think uh I try the best to do these certain things because I um, my job refereeing I I, I feel my, those duties are sacred. Yeah. I think that uh yeah because uh, you know all fun inside you know fun aside uh people are making um a lot of sacrifices time away from their family mm-hmm. and um. They're putting it on the line, and there's a uh, you know it's it's a rough sport. So to have uh, to take that much from someone's life, all mm-hmm. the sacrifices they make for that moment. Each fight is the most important yeah. fight of their career. They could be doing something else. If you're to do something, uh, even you know that that's a sacred uh, right. trust, and um, anyone who violates that, it's, yeah. No, I get that. Yeah, definitely yeah. on the line. If, if more people had that. Yeah. way of thinking the world would be a better place Heck yeah in in yeah. everything really yeah i mean sometimes you you see that because there's a lot of people who have jobs that are that way and uh you know i don't think that uh the the culture around their job doesn't have them approach it that way but anyway that's how i approach this job really. that's interesting yeah. now most referees like so aren't combatants like they don't they're not martial artists or mm-hmm. would you say most are i think that um some you know it's it's a wide variety there's some who uh uh hopefully they've trained most ones who are decent have done some training um there's a few who fought you know who who competed you know what i mean um mm-hmm. i think that if you're going to be a referee you should have some sort of interest in the sport i don't understand like why you would have be from another sport and decide to come and officiate in this yeah. sport you want to should it be officiating you know where your love is so right okay so because yeah. cause you could be a referee and never like in basketball and never play basketball mm-hmm. 
but yeah, I guess I you. I don't think you should though. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't become a referee. So you can't go. To, so she couldn't come to yeah. your course unless she just wanted to learn. Well, okay. So for me, I for, <laughs> for my course. So here's how I do my course. I screen. So not everybody's going to have fought MMA. Right. But at least the main thing is I want them to have trained and have an interest and have a knowledge of position and submission. Yeah. So that's where people get messed up. That's where people make mistakes. So when they come take the course, they, uh, they learn about the mechanics. They learn the unified rules. We go over a bunch of stuff. We do three days. Um, but then on the first day, one of the things they do is they uh, teach me techniques. So I'll have like, I'll choose 10 different techniques at random, but enough to demonstrate a, mm -hmm. a wide well-rounded game mm. and then i have other people who uh, help me so we can get it done in a timely fashion mm -hmm. and you teach us techniques and so they'll come up and they'll say like all right I, there are things i want to know like okay i learned this technique from so and so uh, i'm going to teach it to you by the numbers but i'm gonna do it a little bit different because it works like that for me and this is why i do it like this and yeah even if i learned it on youtube whatever it is you know i want to know something about it and then they'll teach me yeah. And then that way, I make sure that I get people, if you're a judge, we don't want people evaluating right. the, you know, basically the comparative performance of these two athletes mm -hmm. if you don't understand the techniques Some they're of doing. the basics. Even. Yeah, yeah. So, but you'd be surprised. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you'd be, well, I mean, you'd be surprised sense, that well, these yeah. days, right? Because you got mm -hmm. some people who are big fans mm -hmm. and you have some kids who are fans of yours and they're like, I'm going to be a referee. Uh -huh. right. And just feel like I want to be a ref without ever being having an experience fight. right right yeah i'm not going to say any names or some places but there's been some times like the commission some commissions have uh better officials than others and so we're in these rooms afterwards and we're having conversations about why we're doing things right and when they give their explanation it's like okay please don't let anyone outside this room right. <laughs> hear right. what you just said because you're going to embarrass us all <laughs> right. No, I mean, yeah. It makes, it Go makes spend sense. some time on the mat and and know what you're talking about here. Well, are you oh, I, think, are I you, think it makes sense. Are mm -hmm. you starting to see boxing refs want to come over to MMA? From the beginning, they did. Okay. And that was like one of the things that there's a lot of that, and I'm sure there's still some left over from ones who did in the beginning. But I think people in the sport, because in the beginning, you know, the commissions did boxing. They didn't know much about our sport. Uh, some of them, and some some people didn't really respect the sport that much and they mm. didn't realize the difference you don't know what right. you don't know you know right and so uh these guys well it's a fight i can do this well no you got to know a couple of things about the sport right. Dude, you know yeah. and so so yeah they I, that's why i never did boxing because some people would ask me like oh man you know you're uh why don't you referee boxing because there's plenty of other people who can do it better than me yeah. Right. Yeah. So I mean, I think it yeah. makes sense, especially for the athletes that are being, you know, refed yeah. by you, uh -huh. or you know, they. And if there's ever like a discrepancy or something like that, they're gonna want to know that they're in good hands, like their right. their fight, or or like let's say when I'd go up on stage or something like that, like it'd be nice to know that the judges that are judging me, you know, knew something about bodybuilding. Right. Oh, you so what you do you do bodybuilding? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that, well, yeah. I mean, that's interesting yeah. in that yeah. space when you know you have some guy, mm -hmm. most of them are overweight dudes. Sometimes, right? yeah. Sometimes, really? and, yeah. And they're yes. judging these women, you know, and it's mostly guys judging women. Mm -hmm. Although yeah, there's, there's, there are more women now. Oh, is that right? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so they sit back and they just they define or decide who should win based on mm -hmm. all they, of now these a lot key of points. they have yeah. criteria, but they they had yeah. to have competed at some point. Yeah, right? at some point. So yeah, yeah, maybe they're not active today, but they have experience. You know, mm -hmm. or they've done it themselves before, or they've done, you know. Because I think and that would be really hard to it, judge <laughs> bodybuilding. Yeah, like because yeah. it's because it's like I mean that's a lot of criteria, and, and you got to and it's your uh, opinion. I, mean, I, I imagine yes. that would be very hard. And it's quick, right? You know, uh -huh. people walking across really quick, right? You know, and if there was like you said, like a, a discrepancy, then you'd want to know that the people who are looking at you have experience and have that credibility. Right. And there's not like it's just like with MMA too. Like there's not it's not like there's a a point system, right? With the bodybuilding, there's like, like there's placing. criteria, yeah. right? But they're mm -hmm. not say, "Okay, well this right here that's worth 3 points right there." And then that's and they yeah. come up with a number. No, so it's, it's like more like yeah. in the placing and based on how you placed how those numbers add up, but it's right. not like you said like a specific you get 4 for that and 2 for that. It's yeah. like, "Well, I placed you 1 2 3 4." Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, right. See, that's all of that is so interesting. Like, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it would help so many people to understand what goes on when you guys close the door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, as I'm watching a fight, I may be the kind of person to feel like he's pressing the fight. I believe he won that round because mm -hmm. right. he went forward the whole time. But another oh, judge may be yeah. like, yeah. nah, I'm not, I don't, I don't look at it like that. <laughs> I believe that the way he was uh, blocking those takedowns. Mm -hmm. He, he dominated. And so that's the thing. MMA is very much like that with, yeah. the, with the boxing. As far as with the judging, first of all, the judges have a really hard job. 
I mean, I think it's, I think judging is very difficult. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just what you're giving, you know, credit to. So we have some scoring criteria so that people can try to be on the same page. But even in all that scoring criteria, there's some different ways where you can see things a little bit differently. You know what I mean? Or even with, um, you know, like there's situations with the, even with my job, there's, there's, you can't just do everything like a robot. So there's lots of uh, place for discretion you know now do, do hmm. they ever do you ever get the the vote the, at one point didn't no, they used to no, have I, it where the ref could actually that's some other vote? sports did that but okay. i don't but in mma we don't do that um and i'm glad they don't i think kickboxing used to do it that way okay but i'm glad they don't because i'm my focus is completely on one thing my focus is on this is happening right in front of me right. and i gotta make right. decisions and so i don't have my complete focus on who's actually winning that fight so because let's say it comes down to the difference between one jab one person gets lands one jab. Right. Well, if you, if that person, first of all, the judge has to have that type of uh, focus to know, yeah, you know, he's won and he won by a jab. Mm -hmm. And if you won by a jab, if you win by this much in a race, you won. So you should win right. by that in the match. So, um, yeah, so it, it's, it's a tough job. Now, can a fighter, so let's say that, you know, Barbara's got a competition and she's getting ready to fight mm -hmm. and she doesn't <laughs> like you as a ref. Mm -hmm. Can she say I'm? I'm not. He can't ref my fight. Like, do the fighters have say uh, on who can be? She the ref? can. She can throw it out there and sometimes put it out there to the commission. They're going to make a decision. Some would make a decision one way. Some make it another way. You know what I mean? Um, um, I mean, does that ever happen? Yeah. I think so. Sometimes, a couple of times, it's happened, and I don't think that. Um, you know, it's a couple of times it's happened that I've known about, and I don't think there's been a change. And then there's been times. Uh, I'm sure there's times where it's happened where you know maybe we don't know about it maybe there has been a change you know uh, i think of course if they asked me um i wouldn't want to referee anybody's match if they didn't want me to do it you mm -hmm. know uh, you want to feel confident in your referee you know so you can put it all out there okay so right. so are you the are you the guy that gets invited to everyone's birthday party <laughs> oh, that's, you know what I mean? And, and can you do that? You know that's the funny thing. Oh, yeah, bring that like up. It's like one time one of the fighters, man. You, when you mentioned cannabis, I get onto the, you know, I got onto the bus and I uh, after the show, and I, outside I smelled some some a lot of weed, and then I could tell who it was because somebody came in and was asking me these deep penetrating questions <laughs> like they had just smoked. Right? And he's like, All philosophical. He's like, uh huh. And then the guy came in. He's like, man, Herb, you hate your job. I was like, what are you talking about? I love my job. I go, look at what? you. You've been traveling around with us all the time. You can never make a connection, the type of connections that we make. You can't do this. You're always, you know, because he had that, he had that other level of perception. <laughs> that is yeah. so funny. Uh -huh. Yeah. And he's talking so about, elevated. yeah, that, that little bit of uh, a distance. You know, of course, I mean, we're all traveling together and we're friendly. And, you know, I I'm, I trust that, you know, hopefully people trust that I'm going to make the, uh, ethical decisions you know what I mean no right. matter what I did no matter who I said hi to no matter oh, who I right. ate next to but I'm not going to show up at people's house for Thanksgiving dinner you know what I mean that's not because that just doesn't right yeah I'm not coming to the right? birthday the parties right? yeah They're yeah, like, yeah. Oh. but you know I could I mean so are you forbidden to spend quality time with certain fighters you know with fighters well you that's the thing you're not like saying forbidden time. you're not forbidden to do anything but if you if you do have that type of friendship, it needs to be, you know, I think you should talk to people about it. I don't think that you should limit yourself in your friendships. Yeah, I mean, well, you kind of do, but at the same time, if a friendship develops, yeah, okay, you guys are friends, right. but you should talk about it. You know, yeah, like, it would need to be disclosed. Yeah, totally, yeah I'm friends with yeah. Savant Young, so I was friends with Savant quite a bit. Like, um, we uh, had a lot of the same interests. Um, we were neighbors. We trained together all the time. We hung right. out together, so everybody knew that. Savannah so would you so remove had... yourself? Would you yeah. say, you know what, he's my friend? Right. Because then you probably want to be in his corner mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah, I want to hang out. But so what I did, I usually didn't remove myself. What I did is I made it, I made it known. So you just make it removed. transparent. Yeah, I'm like, okay, so you know, he's my friend. He's my neighbor. We hang out a lot. Yeah, okay. Yeah. See, that's that's some good stuff. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it then, is. so then like, you make a choice. What you need to do, you know. So, so her, what what celebrities um, have you met? <laughs> that you were always a fan of because of your role with being an MMA ref. Oh, okay. They have said, oh, hey, Herb. Like, they called you by name. You're like, okay. what? <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> okay, one time I ran into Cuba Gooding Jr. Uh -huh. And he was like, and I was, it was funny because I learned a lot too. Like, I was, I was like, there's Cuba Gooding Jr. Because we're, we're actually at, uh, we're actually at a bar. And uh -huh. I guess Cooper Gooden Jr. at the bar. You know, I'm not going to do my thing. You know, I'm, <laughs> you know, maybe I'll say I didn't. Get off, And then, ref. you know, I look over and Cuba go. Oh, right, you see, man, you, 
I'm here with me trying to be right? cool as Cuba right. King. Uh-huh. I'm, like, I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm like, I'm not gonna be cool for nothing. Right. <laughs> if I see somebody, I'm getting a picture. I'm uh-huh. doing whatever. Did I you guys hug? Do. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. Talk, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. Any, uh-huh. I mean, I'm telling you, uh-huh. celebrities yeah. see Herb, and Heck Herb yeah. is a celebrity. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. You know what I mean? It's for always sure. been that way. If you go back in the day, like it used to be, when the champ walked into a room, mm-hmm. you probably heard people say, "The champ is here." Right. The champ. Well, that was that was real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The champ was always like you know put up on a on a pedestal, like pedestal, and everyone that's tied into that world were right. put on a pedestal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I've, the thing with me is, I've got to referee a lot. I've got to do this for a long time. Mm-hmm. I've been, you know, I started doing it pretty young, and so I've been doing been doing it for twenty years. And so, yeah, so yeah. a lot of people, I get to see a lot of fights, you know. So that makes me, I want to ask then, you've done it for such a long time. What do you think that you've done that has allowed you to have that longevity um, you know, in the sport? Well, I think that, um, well, for one, I, I'm pretty passionate about it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I like doing it, you yeah. know. So I think that's, uh, that's one of the things. And I've got to do it a lot, so I have a lot of tools of doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then... Um, I take moderate care of myself. Uh, the older I mean, get, I'm taking a lot better care of myself. And that's the shame. I should have been taking this care of myself back then, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, I take pretty good care of myself. I'm careful about what I eat. Right. I exercise on a regular basis, you know. Mm-hmm. And, your, I mean, your wife takes care of her. She's in yeah. fitness and health. And takes yeah. Oh, that's so nice. that's that a helps. choice. That's one of those choices I always make. I don't think I would ever, I don't think I'd want to, uh, you know, if you're going to be with somebody and spend time with somebody, you're going to have things in common. Exactly. Definitely. Uh, that lifestyle choice is going to be, you know, yeah, you can't, right. yeah, yeah. So you're going to definitely always going to want to be with somebody who shares yeah. that lifestyle. It's got to be like synergistic. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we do. We do a lot of working out together. We eat together. We work out together. We like to eat healthy foods and we eat healthy foods mm-hmm. together. We don't eat that much so that when we do eat something, we really think about what we're going to eat, you know. Mm. Whereas before I used to eat a lot, I didn't really care what I was eating because I was going to be doing it again and two hours <laughs> but, but now you know right you know i i think that uh i don't know but i know people talk about that intermittent fasting it's naturally that's kind of the way my body works good i don't you know mm-hmm. i don't I, I don't eat a lot so uh when we do eat it's like okay it's got to be good we don't want right. to start one chance you know mm-hmm. but yeah. you've always been very open to different types of foods like mm-hmm. were you ever a vegan or a vegetarian uh, i've been a vegetarian but then mostly been pescatarian lately so my okay. my daughter was a, uh, a vegan okay she went to a warp tour one time and uh oh. uh the um pita they hand out they hand out uh oh yeah those scary cards yeah they oh, hand out well right, they hand out right. videos so on the video was all her little boy bands like all uh. the little bands that she was into and she came in and put it in and started crying. And after that, she was vegan. And, <laughs> oh, man. You know what I mean? Right. So then, like, if I had some meat in the fridge, she'd, like, put the, draw some Freak little eyes out. on it and stuff oh. like that. And little missions and stuff. And so I gave it a try. I was like, you know, but she's like, you know, wow. I, was, uh, I, get, I gave the vegetarian life a try because it's, it was, uh, we cooked together a lot. Oh, you know, good. My, you know, when my daughters were living with me. So um, That's that nice. was, it made it, you know what I mean? So, yeah, that's why I was a vegetarian. It was like a bonding Yeah, bonding something moment. to do. Yeah, right, right. Something you do. Yeah. And uh, so, but then uh, mainly fish, though. I, I yeah. stopped eating a lot of the heavy meats, and uh, but I do eat fish. Mm. Now, what is it that people who are watching or listening to this this yeah. conversation? Uh, what are some of the things that you can share with us that they don't know about Herb Dean? Yeah. Okay, let me see. What do they know about me? Um, uh, I guess one of the, one of the, somebody asked me that question before. Uh, okay. I really like that Michael Jackson song, Butterflies Inside. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's my jam right there. <laughs> that's your jam. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me see. What else do they know about me? Um, let's see. Uh, well, a lot of people know it. I like, I like music, so I like playing guitar. So I like to do oh, a lot. Cool. Yeah. Um, let's see. Wait, would, your, would your wife say that you're a romantic? Uh, probably yeah. Aww. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's Definitely. a good. That's a I good mean, one. If he can break out the guitar, you know. Right. He's like, yeah. Yeah, that's wrong. Yeah, it's yeah. Like throwing uh-huh. out the rose petals too. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about the rose petals, but yeah, definitely yeah. guitar. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, when it comes to like your with your refereeing and all the other things that you're doing in your career and your life, like, uh, is there a website where can people go to? Um. Uh, yeah. Herbdean.com. Okay. Uh huh. Also, you know, you can follow me on social media. Okay. Uh, Herb Dean MMA. Ah, oh, nice. I'm gonna do that right now. Yeah, mainly I just do the Twitter now. I think the other ones are still up, but 
I haven't put much energy into them. But I do, not Twitter, I do the uh, Instagram. Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Now, do you have any last questions you'd like to ask her while we have them here? Um, well, that was a, the one I wanted to ask you about was, well, you know, because you talked about the very beginning, how you've been in the sport so long. You've seen it change so much. What's probably been the, maybe the greatest lesson that you've learned from all that? I know that's kind of a big question. Wow, right? Okay. Um, well, you smoke something before this show? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. getting, getting I didn't even have, uh -huh. have coffee, right? Okay. Yeah. I'm, some, I'm on fumes. <laughs> well, you know what? Um, well, the biggest thing I've learned is that there's so much to learn. That's mm -hmm. one of the biggest things I learned. Like sometimes, you know, you've done martial arts. I've got to do martial arts, you know, most of my life. Yeah. And, man, this sport is growing so much. And when, sometimes when I do have conversations with these athletes or yeah. talk about, okay, well, I saw you did this or you did that these guys know so much mm -hmm. and there's there's so much to learn so much out there to learn about um about everything right yeah so a lot of these guys are i mean these guys are some so many of them are so interesting and they know mm -hmm. so much technically but also uh all these interesting philosophies and approaches each and every one of these uh athletes if you get to this level or even the middle level uh they're exceptional people you know so this yeah. is a sport that you know, very few people on this earth can compete in a sport like this. Mm -hmm. And so just even any conversation you have with these people, there's always something to learn. Oh, I love it. That's awesome. Okay, well, I have my, um, my, my big final question for you. Let's uh -huh. hear it. Um, and you don't have to mention names, uh, but <laughs> a lot of times when people are in the cage fighting, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like back in the day when I when I when I fought Gil Castile, mm -hmm. uh, well, you were at that fight. I was there. Oh yeah, so, yeah, that was oh. a good fight. I remember yeah. after that uh, fight, Gil went back to you know the Diaz and all of them and mm -hmm. they're like yeah he talks in the ring because I was uh, uh, oh yeah uh, oh you were talking to him huh yeah I was talking what to him what were you saying uh, I don't know what I was I'll be uh, I would be talking I remember right. before I fought uh -huh. um uh well, Jake Shields mm -hmm. they were like he's gonna talk to you oh he'll my talk God. to you in the ring. <laughs> that is uh -huh. hilarious uh-huh and so that was you know because you know everybody was all disciplined uh-huh yeah yeah uh-huh but now I watch uh -huh. fights and I see the Diaz talking. Uh -huh. I see right, Conor right. McGregor talking. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Khabib is beating uh -huh. you on. I told you, I mean, he's saying something. Uh -huh. Right, right, right. Uh -huh. What are some of the conversations that were the probably the most memorable or funny that you heard guys exchanging when they're in, in there? The ring. Okay, yeah. No, I've heard <laughs> oh some. God, no, I've heard hilarious. some really funny ones. That was a good okay, one. now there's some people you can tell the ones like the amateurs. Like you can tell the ones we're gonna curse. You know, they got that look. You know, as soon as it gets tough, it's gonna be. <laughs> you know it's gonna be like that but mm -hmm. there's one guy the i think probably the funniest one is i heard a guy talk to guy into quitting you know he uh he got the position he's like boom boom he's like and he was doing anything when he got there he's like man i mean i don't want to do it to you but right here nobody <laughs> can stop me from right here man i mean really if you want to experience it but i think you should just quit man oh, i mean no God. one ever gets out of this position for me and it's just going to be just me beating you and i and i like bam like that and you know what i mean so that was rough and the guy yeah. actually well, the guy, the guy tapped. i mean but he <laughs> like sounded so screwed. convincing i was listening to him i was like man this is you're like this is i believe <laughs> I believe, I believe what he's saying. You know what I mean? Because awesome. the way he said it, it was just like it was. He said it like it was facts. Like, yeah. I mean, not saying. I mean, you're good. You know what I mean? But nobody. Well, I remember. Uh, uh, I think you could hear. Um, mm -hmm. What was his name? Khabib uh, when he fought Michael Johnson. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, mean, yeah. I saw uh, he was like he was, was basically he saying? saying you should give up. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you know, I deserve it. You know, I deserve it. It's you fine. Should it. Yeah. Just. Yeah. No, he's he's funny. Let's see who else. Who else talk? Okay, one time I heard this guy. And as a referee, I think I would, because uh, I, you know, some guys don't let the guys talk. I like it when guys talk, but this one I would have put oh. a stop to it if I thought if I had this experience again. This guy, it was just <laughs> abusive. He was just like, "Show me your face," and he was. Oh. I mean, he was saying some really abusive words to him, and I was like, it made me uncomfortable. I'm like, but I'm wow. the one who should have put a stop to it. But yeah, yeah I right. didn't. But I would do it. I would stop it. I mean, but it was so uncomfortable. I was like thinking, man, this man is gonna need therapy after this. Because you imagine <laughs> somebody saying these things to you and like right. like like I mean it's really in abuse, the fight. Really That's abusive stuff. Gnarly. And like like when he gets a position, don't hide me. Show me your face. So, yeah, yeah, let me uh, uh like yeah. and it was like, like and then afterwards, after after, the, after he won, he got his hand raised, he goes, Oh, um, I'm sorry about all that stuff I said. I, I didn't mean it. It's just uh, help, <laughs> helps me get my head in the right place where it needs to be at. Nothing personal, I didn't mean anything. Oh my okay, gosh. Thanks. <laughs> it's like yeah, that that was, was like, that was uh, good to know. 
Yeah. Like, like, yeah I mean, good they, to uh, know. Next time you watch, like, because I know Floyd, he, I mean, I've been right inside the side of the ring and he's uh-huh. talking the whole time. Uh-huh. He's even talking to the commentators. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like having uh-huh. a whole conversation. Uh-huh. Ah, that's insane. <laughs> yeah, I've seen, yeah, I've seen people do that. Yeah, yeah uh-huh. Just, um, I gotta mic him up better so you can really hear it. Uh huh, yeah, I've seen <laughs> that. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you, I guess, yeah, you did stuff because you used to get in your, your groove. You kind of had your little. Yeah, I would, I would, you're all chatty. Uh-huh. I would be chatty, yeah. Uh huh. Like chatty, so like, and yeah, yeah. I don't know if it felt comfortable. Uh huh. Yeah, like, I think it is. But were like, you talking like that guy? Like you're threatening him? Like no, show me your I, face. No, I, was, I was never like that. <laughs> like that's that's yeah. Those no, guys. You were more getting, like, what are you gonna do this weekend? In yeah. your place, like you little like like you know my favorite is uh, Cadillac Marshbanks, right? He would smoke and then he would get back there and he would dance. Remember, <laughs> remember Cadillac? Oh yeah, I do. Remember, yeah, he yeah. would dance like he would dance like for that was just warm up. Everybody else is back there hitting. He's pads, dancing and he's like you know back there dancing and then he'd come out and he'd fight just like the same dance. He'd be like. <laughs> fight, and then he'd shoot and everything was smooth oh it, was, my God. it was just like he was dancing these names are great too uh-huh. all these names oh, are the, there's some there's some characters i mean to walk in there and that cage closes and Man. they look at you and they basically say like what do you say do you say the same thing every time like oh yeah uh, i know big john was like are you ready are uh-huh. you ready let's get it on yeah so oh, yeah, I, 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 we this. all take that i like to say are you ready too figure there's a okay. difference it may may we need to know even though we know you're here when you are you ready <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean this you, are you yeah. ready for this yeah mm-hmm. yeah so ask my ready and yeah think, let's do it yeah okay so you say yeah, awesome. are you ready you ready let's do it yeah uh-huh yeah well, let's do it let's say the same thing so what would it be like if flavor Flav was the ref <laughs> <laughs> Party, you know, <laughs> you better. You know, you better, yeah, fight. boy. Yeah, are you boy. ready? <laughs> Get that boy. Get you that better fight. be ready, uh-huh. <laughs> Flav. You know, we love you, man. You look like you're ready. <laughs> well, I want to say, hey, thanks, Herb, well, for, for coming. Oh, yeah, thanks for having me on. Yeah, no, we, awesome. we appreciate you, man. You're 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 a good guy, and every time I see you, man, I, I feel like I'm I'm part of you when I see you out there doing your thing. Oh, well, that's awesome because you are, man. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So, this is it's, it's uh. Get to come out here and uh, yeah, have a conversation with you guys, and uh, also just good catching up with you. Yeah, you know? for sure. So, yeah, uh, definitely liked hearing that. Well, and all the stories. Well, there you go, you guys. Another awesome show. Definitely, it was so great having you. Yeah, live your best life and stay healthy. Stay healthy. Mm-hmm.